In Good Shape, your weekly dose of health information on DWTV. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio every week to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. So sleep disorders can have serious consequences. Here to tell us more about the best ways to deal with them and keep them from becoming chronic is a sleep specialist from the St. Hedwig Hospital and Sleep Research Institute here in Berlin, Dr. Dieter Kunz. Welcome, Dr. Kunz. Did you sleep well tonight? Well, it worked. It worked. You slept enough? I did not sleep enough. Yeah, same Wait. problem. How much sleep does an average person need, do you think? Well, as an average, it's said about something between seven or eight hours, but that's uh, individually very different. So there are people that get along fine with four hours of sleep and some others need some 10 hours of sleep, but that's genetically determined and everybody knows that when he's 20. And that does not change with age. Now, obviously all of us have an occasional night when we can't sleep well. When does one know that this problem is serious and needs medical help? Well, firstly, we need to know whether you spend enough time in bed. So every person that is woken up by the alarm clock in the morning, most obviously, did not get enough sleep and shouldn't worry about being tired over the day. And many of us do that. On the other hand, if you do not know why you are, uh, don't feel refreshed in the morning and you feel um, uh, have non-restorative sleep for, for a longer period of time without having a reason, then you should worry about it and may see, want to see a doctor. Now, I'm a slave of my alarm clock. Now, what are the typical causes of insomnia, do you think? Well, first, um, to say that again, that is not getting sufficient sleep. About one third of the people that come into our um, department actually get uh, not enough sleep. And that's the, most, uh, the, the, the reason why they are unrestorative. But then uh, the second one is psychophysiological insomnia. That is a learned misbehavior. So you worry, like you, you said in your introduction, and that may become chronic after a while. If I can't sleep this night, then I will not perform well the next morning. Well, with this kind of attitude, you should not go to sleep uh, or not go to bed. That is one of the uh, uh, second major reasons uh, for insomnia. Now, depression can be both a cause and a consequence of sleep disorders. How does one differentiate between the two? Well, which of the symptoms was first? That's uh, what you need to, need to find out. And it's mostly that the sleep disorder or the insomnia as such is coming first. But if the insomnia has come just a couple of days or maybe weeks prior to depression, then probably depression is the major cause and the insomnia is just a symptom. Of the, uh, of, the, of the depression. But in many people, um, we have chronic insomnia for years. And then after years, a depression is coming. And then you may want to see if you cure the insomnia, maybe then the depression is going away as well. Now, do certain kind of situations, work conditions aggravate sleep disorders? Well, the, the, the most problematic course, of course, is shift work, since uh, there are many regulatory systems regulating sleep wake. That's not just one. But one of them, of course, is the internal clock. There's a whole clockwork in, in all of our bodies. And that uh, needs uh, proper sight gavers, which is most likely light and darkness, which need to come always at the same time. And if we have shift work uh, with night shift work, then we spoil this internal clock and um, then we do get not only insomnia, but we become um, sick of disorders in any part of medicine. So somebody who has sleep disorders, what kind of doctor should they go and see? Well, basically it depends if you're snoring and have apnea, then of course you may want to see a pulmonologist, but most of the others should see a psychiatrist or a neurologist or if you can't find one, then you ought to see a general practitioner. Now, if someone comes to you and says they are anxious to go to sleep, but they are so tense about going to sleep that they cannot sleep, how do you help them? Well, these are, well, firstly, we need to see what are the reasons 
for the sleep disorder or for this problem of falling asleep because most of these have an underlying sleep disorder and because they know that they have unrestorative sleep, feel anxious in the evening. But this feeling anxious is secondary. Um, there's a, a sleep disorder behind that. So in most of them, we need to, to look at their sleep more precisely and very easy. The patient cannot tell me what happens during the night because he is asleep. So the only thing we can do then is put them in the sleep lab and we see many surprises in there during the night when we see things that he never has thought that he did during the <laughs> night. Now, can mod modern mes medicine help people kind of get good sleep at night? Well, we are getting better. We clearly need to say that maybe sleep medicine is the last forgotten field in medicine as, as a whole. Um, it's a huge field. Of course, any disorder that affects the brain is not only there during the day, but during nighttime as well. So any kind of neurologic or psychiatric disorder should um, have, have a, a sleep, sleep background. And first of all, we need to look what kind of, kind of uh, disorder is there. Now, we have one of our viewers, Juan Rico from Argentina. He wants to know how dangerous are sleeping tablets? Well, the, the sleeping tablets of today, their uh, behavioral toxicity clearly is lower uh, than generally thought. So we are now having kind of, kind of nut, uh, good drugs uh, to treat insomnia. The older ones, they um, sometimes uh, so you see dependence with that, but they are not used regularly as a first come uh, uh, drug today. But the near future, I'm pretty sure we will see lots of new drugs that specifically address the disorder that's behind it. Now, as a sleep specialist, what are your simple rules for getting good sleep? Well, first of all, during the day, you should see the sun, which is something that we have forgotten because light and darkness, that controls your circadian time and system, your internal clock, and that's very important for sleep. So. Light in the morning is maybe the most easiest thing to fall asleep at night. And secondary, don't become anxious. So do not argue with your partner right before you want to go to sleep. And do not drink coffee right before <laughs> sleep. Right, difficult for a journalist not to drink coffee. But thank you very much, Dr. Kunz, for that very helpful advice.